Welcome to this Configured Terminal presentation. My name is David Bombal, CCIE 11023 and Master ASE. In this video we're going to look at Spanning Tree specifically on HPA series devices. This video is a practical demonstration of the configuration and optimization of Spanning Tree. Please make sure that you've reviewed the Spanning Tree introductory videos as well as looked at the E-Series Spanning Tree videos. This video assumes that you have a good understanding of the theory of Spanning Tree and thus concentrates on the configuration of Spanning Tree on HP A-Series switches rather than explaining the theory of Spanning Tree. Let's get started. Now previously we configured Spanning Tree on the two core switches in other words, both 5800s are running spanning tree. However, the two edge switches, the pro curve switches, are not running spanning tree. We only configured basic spanning tree on the 5800s by typing the command STP enable. We've not optimized spanning tree. We are not running multiple spanning tree. So let's now optimize spanning tree by using multiple spanning tree, making sure that core 1 is the root for VLAN 2 and core 2 is the root for VLAN 3. Now in the real world this would make more sense if you had multiple VLANs on your access switches and where you had a much larger topology but see this more as an exercise in teaching you how to configure multiple spanning tree and optimize spanning tree and the principles you learn here can then be applied in a larger environment. So I'm going to telnet to call 1. Display STP. As you can see, STP is enabled on call 1. On call 2, display STP. We can see from the output here that call 2 is the spanning tree root. Notice the bridge ID and the spanning tree root ID are the same. Display STP brief. As you can see all ports are forwarding and all ports have the designated port role. On switch 1 you can see that the bridge aggregation is the root port on switch 1, port gigabit 102 and 1012 are discarding. Port 23 is forwarding. So, in our topology, all ports on core 2 are forwarding. However, port 2 and port 12 on switch 1 are discarding. That's because we have a spanning tree loop between core 1 and core 2 and we're not running spanning tree on these edge switches. So as an example, if we look at this link, there is a loop via, for instance, that link, or if we go this way, there's also a spanning tree loop. So both these ports have been blocked. I'm now going to enable spanning tree on both edge switches, and let's see if the spanning tree route changes and let's see if the ports that are forwarding and blocking change. So I'm just going to configure spanning tree with the defaults. STP enable is the command that we've typed on both the core switches. No other configuration has been done. And I'm just going to type the command spanning tree enter on both of these edge switches. So on edge 1, show run. Notice there's no spanning tree configuration on edge 1 and no spanning tree configuration on edge 2. Let's see what output we get with show spanning tree. Notice spanning tree is not enabled on either switch. So I'm going to type quit or rather exit and enable spanning tree. Do the same on this switch. So now show spanning tree shows me that spanning tree is enabled on the switch. Show spanning tree shows me that spanning tree is enabled on this switch. 
we can see that all ports are forwarding on edge 2. On edge 1, notice port 1 is blocking, but port 2 and port 11 are forwarding. Let's see if anything has changed on the core switches. So on core 2, notice previously all ports were forwarding. Notice all ports are still forwarding, but notice the roles have changed. Gigabit 102 is now the root port on core 2. On core 1, port 2 and port 12 are now forwarding, whereas before they were discarding. The bridge aggregation, however, is now discarding. So in this topology, we have got a 20 gig link that is blocking. So just to show this visually, I'm going to fill in the ports that are forwarding and blocking. So once again, on core 1, the bridge aggregation is blocking. So those two ports, each running at 10 gigabits per second, bonded together into a 20 gig bridge aggregation is blocking. No traffic is being sent across that link. The other ports on this switch are forwarding. So gigabit 102, 1012 and 23. So visually that's what's happening on core 1. Notice once again bridge aggregation is discarding. 102 is forwarding, so is 1012 and so is 1023. Let's have a look at core 2. On core 2 all ports are forwarding. So visually 27 and 28 are forwarding, so is port 2 and so is port 12. However, the root port of this switch is port 2, which indicates that this switch is the root. So let's firstly have a look at edge 1, see if all ports are forwarding on this switch once again, and then we can have a look at edge 2. So on edge 1, show spanning tree. Notice port 1 is blocking, port 2 is forwarding, and port 11 is forwarding. So visually, port 1 is blocking, port 2 is forwarding, port 11 is forwarding. Lastly, let's look at edge 2. So on edge 2, show spanning tree. Notice port 1, 2, and 11 are forwarding. So visually, all those ports are forwarding. Show spanning tree. Notice we can see here that spanning tree is enabled. The switch MAC address is this. And you'll notice that it's the same MAC address as the root. And it's clearly stated here that this switch is the root. Now think about that for a moment. An access switch has become the root of our topology. This is what the network looks like physically with all the cables. But what happens if we remove the links that are blocking? How will traffic flow from VLAN 2 to the internet, for example? So that's what the topology looks like. But based on the blocking ports, this is actually what the topology looks like. So if this PC wants to send traffic to the internet, it's going to send it physically to the Procurve switch, which will then send it to the A series switch, which is core 2, which will then send it to edge 2, which will then send it to core 1, then to the MSR or HP router, then to the Cisco router, and only then onto the internet. You must agree that this is very inefficient. Now imagine if this PC was sending a huge amount of traffic to a server connected to core 1 rather than the traffic just going directly from PC2 to core 1 it has to traverse both core 2 and this edge switch before getting to core 1 as you can see very inefficient one of the biggest mistakes you can make with spanning tree is just to allow spanning tree to determine who the root is and which ports are forwarding or blocking even though it looks like we have redundant links in this topology a disastrous situation has taken place. A 20 gig link 
has been blocked in favor of a low speed link over here. This is a 10 100 meg link. That has been favored over a 20 gigabit link. So if I type show interface brief, you can see that these links are running at 100 megabits per second, full duplex. But how is 100 megabits per second better than 20 gigabits per second? As you can see, spanning tree is definitely not optimized in this environment. Physically, that's how the network looks. But logically, with the ports being blocked, that's actually what the topology looks like. So let's fix spanning tree for optimum network connectivity. So in this example, we're going to create two instances. Instance 1 is going to have VLAN 1 and VLAN 2 mapped to it. Instance 2 is going to have VLAN 3 mapped to it. We are going to make call 1 the root of instance 1 and call 2 the root of instance 2. So let's start with call 1. Telnet 10.1.1.101. Spanning tree has already been enabled, so I'm going to type the command STP region configuration to set up multiple spanning tree. The region name is going to be HP. Notice in lower case. The revision number is going to be 1. Instance 1 is going to have VLAN 1.